Hello. My name is Mike Fapp, and this is my YouTube channel, Living in the Illusion. Now, I named it that because we live in an illusion. And living in an illusion, nothing is what you think it is. Everything is kind of a little mystery. And this video, we're going to talk about pain. What is pain? And how do you know you have it? So I'm going to be developing a model. And from that model, give us more insight into the illusion and why nothing is quite what you think it is. So a lot of us think we know where our pain is. We say, well, I feel pain. And then you name some spot, your shoulder, your arm, your ankle your head, or some other physical place. So we're going to take a look at that and see if we can see things a little bit differently. So we're going to start off with the extremities. And the extremities that we're going to look at around the body, around your body, is your finger to start with, to give you an idea of how your pain is determined. So we're gonna start with a finger. So I'm gonna draw a finger. And uh, if you have seen other videos, you'll know my drawing expertise is not in drawing. Uh, so you have to use your imagination. So I'm gonna draw something that you might not recognize, but I'll tell you what it is, and then you imagine that's what it is. So we're gonna start with a finger. We're gonna start with a finger down here in this corner. So here's your finger. Uh, and, and that's kind of your wrist right there. So here's your finger, here's your fingernail, and since we're going to be talking about pain and suffering, we're going to, we're going to put some in this case, I want you to make believe that this is a thorn on a thorn tree or a crab apple tree or something like that. Something in nature that you would accidentally put your finger on. And you can imagine in the same model, with this just being your finger, uh, putting your finger on a hot stove, putting your finger in a door, pinching it, okay? Now, here's your finger. Now, over here, I'm going to draw you. You'll have to use your imagination. So here you are. as best I can, so now I gotta draw, I'll draw the rest of you as, <laughs> as best I can. Now this is, this is uh, your body and you got a shoulder. And in your shoulder, here, you see that it matches up with this. You see that, the, these two, are going to be tied together in a second. So now, 
Okay, here's you. And here's your shoulder, here's your arm. And here's your finger that has a thorn in it. Now, with a thorn in your finger, does your finger hurt? Now you might say, well, that's a ridiculous, uh, you got a thorn in your finger and of course it's gonna hurt. Well, maybe it does and maybe it doesn't. So we have to talk about our senses. Now, how many senses have we got? Normally five. Actually, there's a couple more. But five is what we usually talk about. So those five senses operate bringing information from the outside inside. And then it all goes to the mind, brain, central nervous system. Central nervous system carries the information. Uh, now, uh, we're going to talk about touch, the sense of touch. Now, each of the senses, each of the five senses, operate at different speeds. I'm inserting this uh, slide now so you can see how much information in bits per second is transmitted by your senses. The eyes do most of the transmitting of information, followed by the skin. And then the other three senses kind of dwindle down until taste, which has the least amount of information per second. So we are talking about touch, touching the skin and how much information is being transmitted. And now we'll get back to the, to the video. And we'll have another presentation a little later with more information to supplement the video. Different processing speeds. In other words, the five senses, your eyes transmit more information. Your eyes transmit about uh, 10 million bits of data per second. And the next one is your sense of touch. Now, you recognize that in the body, I, I'm not going to put it there, but your body is like a matrix, a web of neurons, nerves. You have nerve endings throughout your body. Uh, they're not equally spaced because in evolution, certain parts of the body uh, had more, uh, it was more important to know what was happening in certain parts of your body. For instance, your lips have a lot of, of uh, uh, neurons, uh, nerves, nerve endings. And uh, your genitals have a lot of nerve endings too. So it, it's not equally, it's not an equal thing. But you do have throughout the body uh, nerves, nerve endings. So when your body is, when something pushes against your body, the nerve endings 
send signals back to the mind, brain, and central nervous system. So inside, inside of here, you might think of you have a, a model of you that's called I forgot what it's called. Uh, small body. We'll make believe it's a small body in here. So in this case, you have a thorn in your finger. And therefore, the body, the neurons in the skin are going to pick up that information. So there's so I drew this without being connected so that we could talk about the connections. Now you know there's bones in between your your arm and your hand. All kinds of bones and muscles. And you have nerve endings. So if we have this intrusion in the body, it's going to develop a signal. I want you to think about this as a signal. So the nerve transmits information, not the nerve, the, yeah, the nerve, the nerve transmits information when something touches the body, in this case, a thorn. So the thorn touches your body, the same thing if it's the wind blowing, the same thing if you put your finger on a hot stove, the same thing if you put your uh, finger in a door and the door closes, uh, the nerves are going to send signals. Not unusual. I hope it makes sense because that's what happens. But here's the question. Does your finger feel pain? Does your finger feel pain? How do you know there's a thorn in your finger? You say, well, I feel pain. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you do know you are developing through the nerve, you are developing a signal. So where does the signal go? Well, the signal then, that's part of the attachment to here. This is a peripheral nervous system, peripheral, the outside nervous system. The outside nervous system goes to the, up to the shoulder. And if you've been to a chiropractor, you've probably seen uh, pictures. He will show you a lot of pictures of the spinal column and how there's nerves. That's the central nervous system, the spinal column. And the nerves will spread out from there and go out to the body, to the shoulder, to the elbow, out, out to the finger. So that's the peripheral. Then it goes up their shoulder, connects with the spinal into the spinal column. That's the central nervous system. And then it goes up through the back of the neck, whoop, over to here's your finger. In the, in, the, in the little man that's inside of you. So, the brain, the mind, and the central nervous system, which carries the signal, they have a signal to hear now. Now you have signals all the time in your body. 
This is only one of many signals. What kind of signals? I'm tired. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm hungry. Thirsty. The sun's too hot. We got to do something about that. I stepped on a stone. I tripped on a banana skin. There are all kinds of signals that are going on. And then the mind, brain, and central nervous system have to determine which one of those signals to respond to. So all those signals have a lot of information. By the way, none of it is in word language. There's no words inside. Your finger doesn't talk to words to your brain. It sends signals, electromagnetic and chemical signals. And it is those signals, not the words, because there's no words, it is the signals that have to transmit the information so that the mind, brain, and central nervous system can respond to which ones are most important at any given time. So the signal is just data. It's just data. And it has to be interpreted. The data needs to be interpreted. Might not be painful. Might not have anything to do with it. Might be a, uh, a rounded thorn, like a stick rather than sharp. Not a problem. Maybe it's sharp rather than round. Could be a problem. Your finger doesn't know. Here's another thing. Your finger doesn't care because it doesn't have any response. It's just there. It is what's going on inside of you here that is important. Now, a lot of information coming from the signal, a lot of information in the signal, a lot of it isn't important. Maybe the time of the day, location of the sun, being outside as opposed to inside, sitting down or standing up. A lot of that information, which is part of the signal, isn't important. What makes it important? What makes any of this information the signal important? Your past, your past experiences. Your past experiences determine what the present moment is going to be. If you don't see the present moment as it is, you see the present moment as you are. Interesting kind of thought. Now, what are the things that will determine what is relevant in this signal to you? I already told you, your past experiences. And what are past experiences? They're only memories now. So, your past experiences are memories. And your past experiences are going to filter this data. So there is a filtering system here. So inside of this box is a filter of What's true for you 
which is your memories. So your memories are kept in a special place. You know what that place is called? Subconscious mind. You know why they call it that? Because nobody knows where your memories are. Nobody knows where your memories are stored. Now, there's a lot of theories. There's at least three very plausible theories that your memories are stored inside of you. Never found one. A lot of theories why they're there and that they should be there. Never found one. I found a lot of found a lot of uh, uh, I, I was going to say evidence, but it's not evident. It is uh, well. I have to edit this out because I can't remember. Maybe it'll come to me in a minute. So now. You have the subconscious mind, subconscious mind. Where your memories are, that's what we call it. We don't even know where that is. But we know you got memories because you can recall them. After many, many, many years, you can recall memories. So we know there's some place. We just don't know where they're at. But this filter system of this data of how many times you pinch your finger, how many times you put it on a hot stove, how many times you've had a sliver in your finger, all that, all that evidence, all that uh, background is in the subconscious mind. And so you use that, what you know to be true, and that's what your memories are, what you have reference to, you filter this signal. So there's a lot of information, time of day, how much pressure, the sun is shining or it's snowing or some other stuff. Why do I say that? Inside of you, you have no idea what's outside of you except the signal from your senses. Your body has no direct contact with the outside environment. That's another part of the illusion. You think your body has contact with what's outside. It doesn't. Your body responds only to the, what we're going to find out happens inside of you. It's always in the mind first and then in the body. So now we have a lot of information coming. We filter out what isn't important in the moment. So now on the other side of the filter, we have Less information, but more meaningful information. More meaningful for the mind, brain, and central nervous system to make a decision. How important is this thorn in your finger? You see, you thought, you thought it was straightforward. Well, I feel the thorn in my finger. You don't feel the thorn in your finger. You don't feel anything. It's all in the signal. The signal goes up, up, up inside. And that signal is competing for what's going on in here. All the other signals in your body 
your blood pressure, your heart rate, you're cold, you're warm, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're tired, you stepped on a stone. All kinds of stuff is going on in here, and this signal is competing for attention with all these other signals. Now, scientifically, they say, well, that's in the limbic system. The limbic system does all that work and makes those decisions, but it needs a signal to do that. So we have the subconscious mind, which filters out through your past experience what isn't important, which isn't relative to this finger having a thorn in it. And then it goes up here, it goes up here, competes, and then your active mind, I call it the active mind, active mind, which is the mind, brain, and central nervous system. That's the active mind. To me, that's part of my mind. Okay? So, that part makes a determination. Okay? It's, it's a perception. It is an interpretation of the data based upon experiences from the past that determine what's going to happen here. Now, when it makes that determination, the active mind sends a signal. Where does it go? All over. And it goes to the body. Now, what's the signal going to do? Well, every muscle, every muscle you have in your body is controlled electromagnetic signal from the brain. So when the active mind says, pull your finger away from the thorn, of course it doesn't say that. It sends messages, electromagnetic and chemical messages to the muscles because between these two are bones and muscles. And when you send a signal back, this develops a signal also. So you get a signal based upon the interpretation of the active mind. And it sends a signal which will affect the brain and cause electromagnetically to cause muscles to move. You pull your finger away from the thorn. Without that signal, you can't pull your finger away from the thorn. You didn't know that, did you? Well, you probably did, but you didn't think about it that way. And that's what makes it an illusion because you don't see what's happening. You don't recognize how things work. So your pain, okay, that's what else I was going to say. Now, another part of this, the thing that tells you your finger hurts is your conscious mind. I'm going to put conscious mind right here. Conscious mind. Now, your conscious mind, very slow very slow. Your conscious mind looks at the interpretation in your head and says, because it's so slow, it has no idea what's going on here. There's no idea. It says, your finger hurts. Finger don't hurt. 
pain you feel or believe you feel in the body is an interpretation in the mind. It has nothing to do with the body. Now that might be unusual for you to think all your pain, all your pain comes from the mind, comes from an interpretation in the mind. You feel it the way you do because of your past history, what you already know to be true. Now, why is that important? Because when you know the pain is an interpretation in the mind, in the mind, and not in the body, approach to healing is different. Approach to healing is different. Now this signal here tells the mind that you're in pain, that the body is in stress. Now you probably already know that if you have a pain in your finger or any place else in the body in a physical way, you go see a doctor and he will give you a pain pill. The pain pill moderates the signal. It doesn't move your finger. The pain pill moderates the signal so that the interpretation is different. And when the interpretation is different, the conscious mind now will see something different and tell you, well, it doesn't hurt so bad now. You can still have the thorn in your finger, but you change the signal. Now, if you cut the signal off, are you going to feel anything? You can feel anything in your finger. No, you're not going to feel anything in your finger. Because there's no interpretation in your mind. Some people have had, because of other problems, have had nerves cut to certain parts of their body so they didn't feel pain. Now, it's not that the pain was in the finger, but the mind. Oh, the mind. The mind took, interpreted that pain. And when you change the signal, pain goes away or varies. That's life. So, now, to go on a little bit further, and in other videos I've done this, uh, your subconscious mind and your active mind, brain, central nervous system, is operating at millions to billions of bits of data per second. Again, I'm interrupting the video to insert this short presentation around the operating speeds of the senses, the conscious mind, and the subconscious mind. I also have uh, uh, put in references, so if you want to look them up, you can do that. But I want to give you an impression of the differences so that you can begin to appreciate what you're not aware of and how fast what you're not aware of is happening. Now the transmission speed of the senses we talked about uh, already and as you can see it is around 11 million bits of data per second for all of the senses. 
that, are, that get processed. And the reference information is down there that you can, that you can look up. Uh, so uh, it, it, there's also a reference to the conscious mind here, uh, indicating that it only operates at around 50 bits per second. Now, the processing speed of the conscious mind uh, has been looked at by many, many people for all kinds of people, all kinds of different professions, uh, because some uh, process information faster, like uh, pianists that have to remember uh, concert pianists uh, that have to remember, say, an hour, hour and a half of a score, and how fast are they processing that information? So what they've come up with here is a maximum capacity of fewer, of fewer than 50 bits per second, which is, uh, it, it's the same reference uh, location. So if you go there, you'll see how they're tied together. Now, processing speed of the subconscious mind. Uh, I went to Google because I didn't know where else to go. And I says, how fast is the, sub, uh, is the subconscious mind? And it came back, and the reference is, is down below. It came back uh, with this reference and says that it's 400 billion bits of information per second and that it that the information is moving around at uh, 100,000 miles an hour so so you can kind of get that strata now that behind the scene the senses and the subconscious mind are operating at extremely fast speeds and making decisions and bringing worlds into being and then dissipating as more information is supplied. And the conscious mind struggles to keep up. And so what you think you are getting from the conscious mind isn't really what's happening. So now back to the discussion on uh, pain and how you interpret it. That off of Google. Your conscious mind operates maximum, maximum, 100 bits per second. Your conscious mind has no idea what's going on. It has no idea the system is going on. And so neither do you. And so that's why I'm bringing it up as part of what's in the illusion. Now we're going to go on with this. But let's just take a, let's, Take a breath and recognize nothing is the way you think it is. And so next time we get together, we'll do a little bit more investigation around the illusion you're living in. And you don't have any idea, but you believe you do. So be good to yourself. Down below, you can subscribe or hit the like button. That would be nice. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time we get together. Bye now.